everybody, and welcome to another hair-raising, fun-filled, expeditious episode of Radio Rama, where, as the name implies, I show you how to work on radios, televisions, stereos, anything else that runs on glowing vacuum tubes from about the 1930s through the 1960s. And today, we have a 1940 RCA Model 16-3, at least that's what I think I remembered. I can't remember. I'll look up the model number, and like two seconds later, I forget it. <clears throat> Definitely a pre-war set. For the United States at least. Uh, usually when you see a radio that says it's a 19X model, that means it was probably released the year before. So this was probably released in 1939. And another way that you can tell, at least for me, pre-war sets is if it has an inclusion of a RCA jack. That's where that name came from. This is an RCA invention for either FM or television because before the war it was believed, well, People are going to buy televisions and FM receivers, and they're going to want to plug them up to something. So let's provide them with the ability to use their existing radio to provide that sound. Um, I have to admit that I did try it out yesterday. It does still work. I don't know what the condition of the electronics are, but this is a new cord or newer. Um, so I'm not sure if someone's been in here, if it's been fully redone. The case is fair. Um, I know that this area has a lot of rotten rubber wiring in it, so I'm not looking forward to what I'm going to find underneath. So let's, let's take the uh, chassis out and take a look underneath. Okay, well here's the chassis, and there's not a whole lot to write home about. It's a six-tube unit, which is interesting because it says it does shortwave as well. That's, that's a little bit of a stretch by the day. Maybe back then, sure, you could do it because there were more shortwave stations, but today you wouldn't pick up hardly anything with six tubes. Looks like we have an electrolytic that was replaced probably sometime in the 60s up here. That's probably why it still works. Let's take a look underneath. And it's mostly original. We have two replacement caps. This bright yellow guy and this blue guy. Probably also from the same era. The rest of them are factory original. So not much has been done here. I'm happy to see that most of the wiring is cloth covered. This here is also when a lot of that awful rubber coated wire came out, like this stuff. Just, it's not rubber anymore. Probably replace that, even though it's just a phono input, there's no voltage on that. And then likewise we have the band switch. I mean, this would probably wouldn't hurt anything. It's not touching anything. These little black things we call deer turd caps. They're mica caps sealed in hard rubber, and as long as they're not cracked, they're generally okay. But all these paper caps, these guys need to be replaced because they're no good anymore, I guarantee it. And then we'll replace this electrolytic. It says there's three 10 microfarad caps inside, so I got three 10 microfarad replacements. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight or nine paper caps, three electrolytics. Not much to really replace here. It's a rather simple set. I like the fact that it's got a transformer in it, which will make putting an audio input easier. And it even has an audio input. Just run it in directly. You can do that because this has a transformer. And that's going to isolate the user from any harmful electrical current versus the hot chassis set. So it makes life a little bit easier. We will put a safety fuse in here so that if something goes bad with the transformer, the fuse will go first before it toasts the transformer. Even though I guess if your transformer is going to start going nuts, then there's no, you know, it's all it's going to do is prevent the transformer from melting in the tar and stinking up the house, which is a horrible smell. We have an electro field magnetic speaker versus a permanent magnet speaker. Looks like the surround has been repaired with glue over the years. It's not unusual. These little push buttons will need to be cleaned. All those little contacts. So first things first, I'm going to replace the electrolytics and uh, then we'll go from there. All right, so we have it flipped over and we're going to proceed with replacing the electrolytics. We had this one cap that was going over the top this guy and uh, the way that RCA was labeling their caps back then is they'd have just a real generic stamp on the side to clean this off I'm not sure if you can see that 
but it says 0.05 400 volts honest to god it doesn't really matter exactly the value i mean you want to get i try to replace like with like um but you know if something says 0.05 and you only have on 0.068 on hand that'll work just fine so we have three 10 microfarad caps you see these three lugs here and the negative is chassis ground so that's easy and so we have this lead this lead and this lead and it's all about convenience of location so if you need to relocate the chat the chassis ground somewhere else then you can do so so we have these three individual 10 microfarad caps they're going to replace each of these three values and because i really don't trust these paper caps at all i think i'm just going to go ahead and replace them all at once because so, there's not that many to replace there's a 0.05 rated here tenth of a microfarad here I don't think it had my flashlight. These are probably like 0.02s. Let's see, what is this guy? 005. And what does this guy say? I'm going to have to get my flashlight on this one. A lot of the, the ink has faded. And again, we're not worried about these guys. They, they seem like they're physically fine. They're not cracked or anything. And uh, they're very specific as far as value. So you if you have to replace them, make sure and replace it with the precise value. That's in the IF and RF transformer areas, and if those are off, your it's going to throw off your alignment. Okay, so the electrolytics have been replaced. We've got one, two, three moved over, and then I replaced just that cap. We'll replace the rest later. What I'm going to do is clean some of the contacts here with some cleaner. And then we will flip it over and clean some contacts on the top, and then we'll give it a, a whirl. Let's see if it still works, which I sincerely hope it does. It's nothing worse than having to set the work before, and then you mess it up and it doesn't work. So let's flip it over and clean the contacts up there, and we'll plug it in and see if it still works. All right, so we'll clean these little slider switches up here, because these are the function switches and yes I'm using WD-40 a lot of people are like oh that's terrible I've never really had a problem with it I've been using it for about 20 years including my own personal electronics manual tuning let's go ahead and fire it up that's my wife sneezing and we got tube filament that's good. So this has an internal antenna, so you don't have to have a, an extension. I think this half a player thing is for a couple of positions. Rising inflation is causing many to borrow more and more. It's a big it's number. Well, we're, we're both married and every day. Okay, it works. I don't want to play it too much without having the rest of those paper caps replaced because if one of them shorts, that could be bad. So let's flip it back over and continue with the recapping job. But we're off to a good start. Seems to be a healthy radio with the bare minimum done. So that's a that's a good sign. Okay, we're marching on with capacitor replacement. I've replaced two more. We have, looks like one, two, three, four, five more to replace. I'm looking at this one. It has a what I would call a pigtail connection. That wouldn't have been done from the factory. This was a probably a much earlier repair. That even looks like it could possibly be a 40s era capacitor. Maybe early 50s. It's hard to tell. They made these wax caps pretty late. Um, but actually I looked, there's another capacitor here. I'll be darn, just about missed that one. Uh, but again, what I do is I tend to, when I replace my caps to keep my places, I'll snip one end. That usually gives you the opportunity to tell what that value might be if you can't see it. These are definitely not easy to read. 0 0.005. Okay, that makes sense. If you look at the size of it compared to the others, I'd believe that. And that goes there. And sometimes you can take the the old sleeves off and reuse them. That's 
woven cloth should be fine to reuse. And you just like solder one end of the new cap to one end of the lead you just snipped. Then snip the other. Same thing. That way you don't lose your place. Okay, so it's been fully recapped. It wasn't that bad. And the trick will be to see if it still works, which is always a, it's a possibility I missed a lead somewhere. Let's fire it up. See if we get any noise out of it. I think it'll work, but who knows? I've eaten my words many times. Come on, warm up. Spencer's childhood home in Albion, New York, a permanent reminder of his incredible legacy. Henry Spencer died at night. Doctor, in what state are we now? The brain and the the. Drew Mary Show on Relevant Radio. Transatlantic slave trade was a segment of the global slave trade that transported between 10 and 12 million enslaved. Breaking news and analysis, townhall.com. With over 30 years' experience, two minutes. Here's the number you need. 866-88. Might need to do a little bit of an alignment. It seemed like we had some stations bleeding in about midway through the through the dial, so we'll uh we'll check it out. Before I am done under here, I want to replace some of the crumbly wiring, even though I don't think it's necessary. It would just make me eh, makes me feel better. Then we'll flip it up and we'll do a little bit of a an alignment on it. Oh, we got a little bit of bleed over from one of the stations. Let's see. Yo, Pablo Torre here, host of the ESPN And we believe that God has granted us his word to equip us in all issues for the world. We want to get behind the highlights. You know, I believe many churches are standing firm on the word of God. Let's see. Because the other day I was reading a blog post of a fairly large church, and the pastor in his blog post was stating how that they have decided officially amongst the church leadership, the Board of Elders, to no longer be a welcoming church. It was weird. Why is it bleeding over so much? There we go. That adjustment was way out of whack. He's been a James Capri and you've been one. Miles Garrett is being cited for a single vehicle accident. Explain all the reasons. Cheers, mate. Got weird. We wrong and they are just being cautious, but seven seven cars, kids. A little bit of rattle on that speaker. By the way, that's the world's most annoying commercial, but it's effective. Cars for Kids, spelled with a K. All right, so I've run the audio input through the original phono connection. I ran this through an existing hole, and I put a rubber grommet in it so that if you yank on it, cord's not going to chafe on the metal. The speaker was making some funny noises earlier, so I'm hoping I can fix it. I think it's rubbing a little bit. I did bend 
the speaker basket a little bit to try to ease up on the rubbing sound, but we'll see what it sounds like. I wanted some music to go through it because having, you know, radio most of these days is talk, so I really can't tell exactly what it's going to sound like when it's got music going full blast, so we'll try it out. Okay, it's not pretty looking, and I had to fight and struggle with this thing. It was rubbing, and I know this sounds lame, but the way that I sometimes fine-tune these things is I get a giant wrench, and I tug on the corners where the cage supports are, and what you can do is kind of, by feel, you can hear when the, the rubbing sound will go away and you just bend and tweak that cage a little bit. So it's not perfect, but I think it's... I mean, for 80-year-old radio, it's fine. No one's going to hook this thing up and expect it to sound like a pair of Bose speakers or whatever. So electrically, except for the fuse, we're done here, but a, uh, let's see what time it is. 2 o'clock warm and sunny outside. I think it's time to go start working on the case. All right, so we can see there's quite a bit of scratches, wear and tear, abrasions all over the case. It's not unusual for something this age that's probably had this amount of usage, but we're going to clean it up. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the escutcheons and the plate glass and stuff. Small screws here. That glass should slide right out. And there's two screws here. And I'm assuming that this brass piece is probably folded in place. We'll see. Maybe when I pull these out, it'll come out as well. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to liberally apply a product called Old English to the whole cabinet. And then what you do is you got to use an old paper towel. Well, not an old one, but a paper towel. And you start wiping it into finish and you see what's happening here is all those little scratches and imperfections and everything are kind of getting obscured by the stain or whatever is inside of this product I've been using for years works like a champ we're gonna go over the whole case with it very liberally and we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes and then we're gonna make sure and try to seal this finish in with some uh, wax we want to make sure it's gonna stay more permanently squeaky clean looking and these things did come from the store and most of them came glossy a lot of people refinish them satin because they think that's how it looked but in reality no a lot of these came from the store pretty glossy almost like a piano finish all right well this is after putting a copious amount of old English on the cabinet I'm gonna let it soak here for a few minutes and then I'm gonna go after it with good old-fashioned carnu with paste wax that will ensure that this will be permanently shiny. Right now it looks just kind of oily, which is what it is, but I want that stuff to soak in there for a few minutes before I start this process. Okay, here's the result of not only after some structural repairs, because there was a bunch of loose veneer in the back. Not uncommon because this is exposed, so if there's any moisture it will cause that veneer in the back to come loose, so you glue it back together. But in the meantime I have waxed and polished the entire case several times. Is it perfect? No, it's not. It's got still got scratches. But it's 80 years old, so whatever. Likewise, I cleaned up all of the knobs and the brass. A lot of people make a mistake sometimes of absolutely stripping this down to the bare brass, but it did come with this, what do you, I guess you'd call it like a bronzing or an antiqued sort of appearance so no you don't want it shiny you want it just like that so I'm gonna let this uh, dry for a little bit and I'm gonna since this is a nice lovely day out here I'm gonna bring the chassis out and clean the chassis and oil everything and probably tomorrow will be time to do final assembly and it'll be done okay well I cleaned up the chassis do you have to do this no but I figured being 80 years old it deserves a little bit of a cleanliness I'm right, about to button it up for the evening, but anyway, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to oil all of the points where the tuning condenser engages. We have these little pulleys. We have the tuning condenser itself, which has some bearings down in here and in the back. And we're just going to make sure that everything's going to move a little bit easier. I have this little zoom spout oiler. Why they call it a zoom spout oiler, I'm not quite sure, but maybe it's because the oil zooms down the little spout here. You tell me. Anyway, 
now we'll work that in a little bit see that's already moving a lot better it's much more quiet and then we're going to clean the dust bunnies off this front here put it back all in the garage and uh, probably tomorrow we will do a final assembly we also need to install the safety fuse off the transformer all right, welcome back to day number two of working on the RCA. And one of the last things I'm going to do before I button this project up is I'm going to install a safety fuse. It's going to be between the incoming line. And what that'll do is it's going to protect my transformer. If something haywire happens in the set, I don't want to blow up my transformer. Instead, I want to blow this 1.5 amp slow blow fuse. I'm running out of fuse holders, so I found these vintage fuse holders. And I drilled a hole through the chassis and it's going to go right in here and it'll run a line to and from the switch and then it's going to be time to start adding pieces back to the cabinet that I took off the trim the doll glass everything and then we'll stick it back together and hopefully she'll still work all right so we got the fuse installed here and that will prevent us from having things go awry in a very bad way, if it should so happen. So now it's time to do a little more assembly of the cabinet, get some of that trim and stuff back on there, and then we'll put this back in the cabinet, see if it still wakes. Anyway, it seemed it turned out quite well. I've had it on for about maybe 45 minutes. I want to make sure that anything that might get, you know, baking hot inside that chassis once it's all sealed up is not going to fail. It's a possibility when you have 80 year old components. I think it's going to be fine though. It's got a good sound. Audio input's working. Radio works great. And um, I don't know. RCA kind of had a love or hate it design methodology at this time period. I personally kind of like this era of RCA. I think they, they put a little more pizzazz in their cabinets. Anyway, I had a lot of fun working on this, and I think it looks great. And I um, hope you guys enjoyed watching this episode. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments section down below. And until the next time something comes across the workbench, which I assure you, there's going to be a ton, because we got a lot of donations last weekend. I'll see you next time. Adios.